Hi everybody. Guess what? I've seen, I looked all around to find a video of someone replacing the catalytic converters on a 2002 X5 Jag. And all of them were like, there's really nothing there. You know, anyway, I explained to you what a shit job this is. This is horrible. <sighs> I don't know what to say, but I mean, the car is a great car. I really like it. It's just a, you know, it's just a winter car for me. You know, it's not something I drive during the summer. But I had to replace the cats because it kept pulling up the cat code, so the cats were bad. And I'm going to show you, and this is just an overview. It's not going to go through the whole thing. This is hours of work, I'll tell you right now. And the reason why is because I'm in the Northeast. And everything is rusty. I've had to cut so many bolts, but I'm trying to save as much of the exhaust system as I can so when it goes on, it kind of looks factory, you know, and seals. But there's a couple things I gotta show you. Um, how are you gonna do it? And the initial parts, you know what, the front cat, really simple. It's the rear cat. And there's a th couple things I did wrong trying to figure out how to do this where I just should have done, okay, this is what I gotta do pull it off. So let me show you first on how to get the front cat off. This right here is the front cat. You can see one of the bolts right there. What you can do with the front cat is pull this back with a pry bar. You, you first have to pull this bracket off. This is the engine mount bracket. You have to pull the uh, radiator tube. As you can come over here, you can see this. This is just a tube. It's just a clip. Pull it out. It comes right out. And it doesn't really spew out too much clean coolant, probably a you know, a couple, maybe a pint or something like that. I mean it'll drip, it'll drip, it'll drip, but it's not that bad. And you also have to, you know, as you can see, pull the air box, the air mass meter, all that stuff comes right out. It's really not hard. The front joiners right here for the air intake scoop, um, these are kind of a pain to pull out. Um, but just work at it, you'll get it. You know, um, bending, flexing. If it's warm, it's a big plus. Now, the problem is going to be is when you go to the rear cat. Well, let's go over and take a look at where, where you got to get the bolts there. Here's the aftermarket cat installed. There is the new bolts for the catalytic converter. And there's the new, actually it's a new oxygen sensor I put in. Goes on. Now, one thing you can do is on all these bolts, you can put a very long extension and a... Um, a universal breaker bar and what did I use I think it was a 13 millimeter uh, deep well socket and I'll show you what happens when you try and pull that off here are the two cats this is uh, the factory cats this is the rear or the one next to the firewall and this is the front one the front one was easy to get off if you can take a look what happened was here is the bolts they just turned out the studs just turned out of this real easy no problem it worked pretty well. They came right out. The rear, on the other hand, as you can see, it's all shiny right there, all shiny. And this is what happens. Every single one of the bolts here broke. It actually, <laughs> believe it or not, it actually worked out better because it just snapped the bolts and it's like, okay, I can just pop the cat off. Then when I tried popping the cat off, ah, miserable, miserable stuff set in. And this is, this is going to be the one that, that's going to give you the problems. Um, Ford, after looking at the whole design, Ford designed this catalytic converter and that setup for a front wheel drive car. You can tell. Because when they bolted the transfer case onto it, it, it just made it a nightmare. So let's go underneath the car and I'm going to show you what I did. Here is the replacement cap which is in the same position. Actually, I kind of like this cap much better than the stock one because it doesn't make a right angle going, it just, it curves. But this pipe was right here. This bolt was pretty much round. It was round, I couldn't get anything ripped on it. Um, and it was, I had to cut the thing off. So I'll, what did I use? I used the grinder, cut, cut it off. Now, we'll bring the pipe over here. The way this pipe was situated, this bolt right here that went through here, you couldn't get at with a, with a die grinder because the transfer case is right here. This one, I sliced the bolt in half like this, used a chisel, popped it out. This one, what I used 
with a die grinder with a real long carbide shank. In order to get the bolt off, I put it up here and I was around everything. I could cut the bolt off and then I popped the uh, nut off so I could pull out this. And another useful tool to get this pipe out, I use this tool. This is for snap-on um, exhaust expander tool. What you do is like a duck bill. This thing was rusted directly on this. I took a hammer in back and I, sh and I basically um, made a wedge right here to expand this joint all or as much as I could around. Went like, wiggled it, then brought it down, pulled it out. Great little tool, you know. Uh, that and a hammer. <laughs> and now let's go on to the rear cat and how I got that out. All right, in order to get the uh, rear cat out, what I had to do, I should have done this. Well, I never done this. I couldn't see anybody who has done it, but I shouldn't have taken the bolts off the cat for one thing. Uh, I should have saved that for last. What I did do at first was I took the bolts out of the subframe to pull this thing down to give me a little bit more room to get the bolts up inside for this right here. This right here is where the transfer case sits. So I pulled that down and I pulled the transfer case out. And what happens in order for you to do that to start out with is, you know, you have to remove the exhaust, you know, uh, flange. In order to get that exhaust out, I couldn't reach the bolt up inside. Let me show you. For starters, to get the uh, cat out, this right here is uh, the first cat pipe, or the rear cat pipe. It bolts right here and it comes right down. This, I couldn't get out with a wrench and it was completely rusted. But let me go over, I'm gonna show it to you on the bench over here, um, which is a better angle. This right here is the pipe that you're probably going to have an awful lot of problems with if you're in a rust belt or any type of place where they use salt. This was pretty much caked up with rust, but the bolt was still good, okay? That was, that's actually, you know, very good. What I couldn't do was I couldn't get that pipe expander inside in order to tap it in. So I couldn't get the cat off anyway. Well, what did I do? Take my handy dandy sawzall and cut the cat. What happens is you can stick there. If you take the plastic shroud off of the wheel well, you can stick the sawzall right in there and get a nice clean cut. There's nothing in back. After I got that done, this right here, these are studs that are pressed in, just like a wheel stud. Here they are. As you can see, they're really, really rusty and I couldn't get a torch up inside or on the, uh, on the upper one. I didn't wanna, um, uh, it was just like rounded off rusted bolts is what they were. What I did do is I put it in the vise, I used my torches with a brazing tip, I got this cherry hot, red hot, and used the hammer, tapped them out. Now I can just use bolts. I can replace the bolts. You can cut the bolts and put new ones in, whatever you want to do. Whoops. We'll go on to the other side. This is really hard to get because it's stuck up right next to the frame rail. You can't get at it. And this is a stud. This is not a nut and a bolt or where you could press it out. You have to drill it out. But I have the torch. I put it in the vise. I use my brazing tip and I met this cherry red hot. And what I did, as you can see, this is the stud. I didn't do this. This is from rust and exhaust leaks blowing this through. These are the, sh these are the threads right here that were in this. What I did is I got this cherry red. I put a set of vice grips on this and I slowly moved it back and forth. It took me like five minutes to do this after it was cherry red, going back and forth, back and forth. Now I can just use a standard, looks like an M10 stud, and I'll put a new stud in it. That way, everything will work. This one looks like it's already been replaced. What I have to do is I have to use my threading, you know, my, um, my die from my, you know, tap and die set, run it down to make sure all the threads are clean, then put it back up inside. Next thing, I had to remove the transfer case. And the problem was, there, I mean, there really wasn't a problem. After I realized I had to remove the transfer case, there we go. Here it is. This right here is the transfer case. Uh, let me uh, bring you over there and I'll show you just a quick little summary of how I got that out. 
In order to remove the transfer case, seeing how I pulled the uh, subframe mount bolts down just to give me a little bit more room, you have to take this off, which means just pull the ball joint down. That's it. Quick little thing is there's a plastic cover right here. You pull that off. There's a drive shaft that goes um, from here, you know, the half shaft that goes from the wheel all the way through. It's a big long shaft. I'll show it to you over there. You pull the ball joint down. You undo the nut on this. You pull this back, pull it out, then give it. Um, I was using a couple of crowbar. I mean, a couple of crowbars and a hammer, and I just and I just lightly tapped it out. It did. It came out all right. It really wasn't that bad. And then uh, you have to unbolt the transfer case. Let's... Here's the transfer case bolts. One, two, three, four. Be careful. I had a lot of galling. I can't remember if it was on this one or this one. Um, but I had to move it back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. I still lost some threads, but that wasn't, you know, too bad. Big thing is, there's a plate. This plate right here goes right there. It supports the front snout of the uh, side of the transfer case going out to the CV shaft, or uh, where the CV shaft output is. This is by far the worst thing to get. This is absolutely terrible. Besides that, and you'll see there's a bolt right here. That bolt is terrible to get at because that's a heat shield. Just another thing. And this is the rust that, these are the two bolts that hold the converter on there. I got to put a nut on these and try and weld them, try and get them out of there. But I'm not too hopeful on doing that. Uh, I'm going to do that off camera. Because, I, you know, you don't want to hear me swear. That's pretty much it on... Uh, that let me bring you back over to the bench and show you some of the other parts. I told you when you pull the CV shaft This is what it was This is the CV shaft for the right side. I mean, yeah for the right side of a uh, X type Pretty much standard this looks like to me like a sob This is all the same This is a compression clip that holds it in so when you're trying to pull it out and it's not coming out This is the only thing that's it. It's a spring-loaded clip pretty much that holds it in What I was doing was either uh, I was tapping this side and pulling it, you know, supporting it and just, just tapping it out. Because you just want to get this over the ridge and you're done. There, there's that. That's like a kind of an annoyance thing. Um, when you're doing this, you're not kind of, you're sitting there going, geez, am I going to break this thing? Is there a circlip in there? You know, did, it's like Audi with a certain couple of uh, CV joints that they did. They have circlips you can't see. You swear you can pound them out, but they don't. But that's, that's a whole nother story. That's for the uh, quattro builds. Let me go over here, I'll show you the transfer case and what you need to do with this. Here's the transfer case. Right here is, in their infinite wisdom, there is no fill port on the side of this transmission to fill it, to change the oil. When I took the oil out of this thing, it was goopy. It was black as soot. And if you take a look on the web, everybody has a problem because they say this is lifetime. Uh, use oil that's inside here. That is a bunch of bullshit. I think, you know, if they say it's a lifetime thing, if that car is still on the road, I think Ford should replace it for free. Or Jaguar should be replacing it for free. If they were so incompetent, or actually, I say, that's actually not incompetent. If they were so devious to make a component fail because you couldn't change the oil, that is, to me, that's pretty crappy. That's really crappy. We have to... Um, change the oil in it. What I did is this is where they generally fill the oil from the uh, from the factory. I believe it was 600 millimeters. I got to check before I fill it in. I've already. I what I did do is I used a pressurized system that I pumped oil into it. I pumped six. I think I pumped 700 millimeters. So when I swapped the caps over, it basically came down to sort of because I wanted to clean it out. And I used the lower viscosity to, to get inside the internal workings to clean out all the junk. When I poured and with less than 2,000 miles on this. I poured the oil out and it was black as soot. I'm going to do another oil change. I'm going to use, actually I'll probably use uh, the 75140, you know, fossil oil and change it again another 2,000 miles. And then I should be good. I took this inspection port. I, I let it sit overnight so it spills out onto this plastic retainer. Right here. And this is the only thing they use is for a drain hole. What I was thinking about doing is, is taking one of these things out, building out a, uh, a pipe, because this is, 
to me appears to be an NPT thread. Build out a pipe with like a dipstick and figure out what it is. But you know, I got the thing down to where I can fill fill it with oil and not lose very much of it and do a pretty decent job. What I'm going to do first is I have my setup. I'm going to put this back in with no oil in it. So I can uh, fill it up. I, and let's see, this is the cap right here that goes right there. And as you can see, they, they thread locked it. Should be able to put that in. With the aftermarket cats being half the size, I should be able to get a wrench up inside here and just fill it up. When I do that, I'll film that. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to stop, turn my radio up, <laughs> and start installing all this stuff back in. I just want to get this thing done and show you, and to the end part, where we're going to be at is me filling the top of the transfer case, putting everything on, starting it up. Oh, another thing. I almost forgot. I put those catalytic converters in. The gaskets, they're off of eBay. I bought them for $150 with $27 shipping or something like that. Very reasonable. The gaskets do not fit. You have to modify them to make them work. And I use the step drill to do it. It's, it's just the way it is. The rear is worse than the front. The front, I just had to hog out one size over on the step drill. The rears, I had to hog out two, then cut slits in order for them to fit. It's just the way it is. And the bolt setup, we'll see. We'll see if they last. It looks like, you know, fancy grade Chineseum, you know, but, you know, whatever. Beggars can't be choosers. So I'm going to get to work on this. I want to get this done by the end of the day so I can get it off my bloody lift. And... Uh, when you see this next, I'll be filling oil into this jug. <laughs> All right, we'll see you in a second. This right here is the mount for the rear of the transfer case. This right here is the heat shield that goes around the transfer case to sh that blocks it from the heat from the uh, catalytic converter so it doesn't overheat the transfer case. This has to be on. I forgot to say, these bolts right here, this one and this one, horrible. I'm glad I pulled down the subframe. It gives you just, just enough. And even then, it doesn't really give you that much. It's just, you know, quarter turn or at best as you, as you put it in. Other than that, the top of the transfer case, what I said I was going to fill, can't do it. I cannot get a ratchet in there with the catalytic converter in it. I thought with the, the size of the catalytic converter, I'll have plenty of room. Nope, it's like this much. And I don't have the room to put a 3 8 ratchet in it in order to tighten it or to loosen it. I pulled the, back, the transfer case back out, seal it on the plug, put the plug back in, put the transfer case back in. We'll be filling the transfer case the way I did it previously with my pressure uh, cylinder. That's all I have to say. Let me get back on with it. Well, we got to get the bolts off for the uh, catalytic converter mount because this mounts the catalytic converter or stabilizes it. Try and get them off, see what happens. What I want to do is get the stud uh, wel uh, welded to the nuts. Now I want to heat up this with a torch. While there's still heat in this, you want they'll take less energy. Make this cherry red. This is all set. Now I got to this one. Oh, that. Come on. Tip dirty. Try to do it nice and easy so it turns out. So a lot less time, a lot less risk of mucking up the threads.
There we go. Oh. And you should be wearing gloves with this stuff, but I needed to have the feel with the uh, vice grips because I didn't want any dullingness of it. There we go. And now we don't have to drill and tap the holes. I mean, I'll probably, I'll, there's a good chance I'm just going to run a tap down there. It's just an MA tap. How long that would have taken me to drill out in the drill press and tap it? I probably wouldn't even have gotten the holes right. Well, another follow-up uh, for putting this thing together. I figured you might guys might want to know. This is the clamp that came off of this for the original catalytic converter. I wanted to use this because I just wanted to make it look factory. Won't do it. I compressed the clamp all the way I could on this pipe, and it goes up and down into the cat. So the cat external pipe is uh, too small. I also want to go, I'm going to show you something uh, on the car with that catalytic converter that you're probably going to run into. Okay, we're here by the transfer case. This is the mount with the four bolts that I put on. If you take a look here, this is a spacer. And this is the mount for the, for the aftermarket catalytic converter. What I did was I got this because this mount is not even remotely close and I didn't want to bend and stress the mount on the actual cast iron manifold. There's another mount that's up here because you saw me take out two bolts on this doesn't even remotely line up don't even don't even try um, I don't know what else to do I'm just gonna tighten up this with this spacer in here so it doesn't put too much stress on it but it also maintains the catalytic converter is, is has an actual stable mount everything else is bolted up I'm gonna bolt up the exhaust and then we're gonna get uh, the oil in it start her up let's uh, give it a shot we are now at an impasse I was going to show you me putting oil in this thing how I did it in the transfer case but what it is is this cat pipe needs to be cut and welded that's what you get that's what i get for trying to you know hey save some money you know but they all look like the same cats but i gotta cut this off and i'll bolt this up this is where it's supposed to be it's a you know it's about a centimeter or a half an inch uh too far it just needs to be turned like that pretty much and then I'll cut that I'll weld it up it's just more crap that I have to do it's you know what I'm just about ready to junk the car um, but I won't. I'm just I'm not gonna give up so let me just go do that I'm gonna cut that off uh, bolt these up and bolt everything up and weld this to the uh, weld this clamp this in and weld it to the cap and we'll, we'll go from there I should have enough to get around there you know? Wish me luck. We are now at the point of putting the oil back in the transfer case. This is what I do. I have a basically a suction gun that you buy like at you know cheapcraptools.com, Harbor Freight, stuff like that. And I filled it with 600 milliliters of Lucas uh, 75 140, basically heavy duty racing differential fluid or whatever you want to call it. Two basically fittings up here that, you know, one barb fitting and one fitting that actually screws into the uh, port or the empty port down there. And you have this. And this is the, this is the uh, plug for the fill. Now, what I need to do is to get all this fluid or most of this fluid. So it takes 500 milliliters. Is that, that's what the book says. What I'm doing is I'm putting 600 milliliters in it. What this tube is going to, with the volume in this tube, and when I pull it out and the excess that comes, you know, rushing out of this thing, I figure that's probably about 100 milliliters. Am I exact on getting the correct amount into this? No. <laughs> it, it's not. It's, and it's probably not going to happen. I have it to the point where um, I have a pretty good, it's, it's going to be close enough, but I'm going to be changing it anyway in another 1,000 miles. That's pretty much what I have to do. There. That's all of it. And a lot of it went down my hand. Like glue. That's it. We now have 
oil in the oil in the transfer case. We have catalytic converters on. I have to go up and uh, get my computer, put it in, see if it works, start it up, see how many leaks I have. Uh, you don't need to see that because I just got to be tightening or doing something to make it work. We're going to end it on this. I'm also going to do an addendum uh, that I did a little while ago. I built some adjusters for the rear of the car. Uh, might be interesting. Might not be. If you want to stick around and see it, go right ahead. If not, thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate it. I'm nothing special. This is something you can do easily. No, well, hold on a second. Not easily. If you're stupid and you want to do something and waste your time for four days, especially on your back, yeah, go ahead and do it. Uh, do I think the car is worth it? It drives really nice. It's a great car. The engineering is just horrible. It's like nobody talked to each other on how to service the cars. They just put it together and they want you to buy new ones. And that's about it. Well, um, on that note, I guess just have a great day and I'll hope to see you soon. Thank you. Have a good day. Well, it's winter. Um, I'm taking a small break from the A2-22B, um, SQ, Mahari, stuff like that. And I'm fixing up a winter car. I bought this car for parts. And pretty much what I did, as you can tell, I'm sniffling. Um, you can see it on the left. It's an X-Type. Well, <laughs> and pro you're probably saying, why? Why did you buy something like that? Because it's a shit box. Well, it's a cool shit box. I bought it for 350 bucks. It's a manual three liter V6. And actually it goes pretty well, but there's some really nagging problems in this thing. Um, pure design problems. And I'm gonna be trying to fix that. And so it's, it doesn't require any money. I mean, the, why I got this is because the guy it needed an alternator and it was hitting the rear, but really, really light. And I pushed that out with a come along, I mean, uh, my port of power, and it came right out, no problem. Uh, alternator, that was exploded. The uh, serpentine belt sucks, it's terrible. But everything else, it seems to be working really, really well. I'm, I'm getting a lot of small stuff done. I have to do an O2 sensor and a couple other things. Um, I'm just trying to sort everything out now. And I'm gonna go through, we're gonna do, a, this is like a, the first step. I wanna try and make this really small uh, video. And what we're gonna do is the problem I notice on these things is they do not have any rear camber adjustment. So you can't adjust the camber and the wheel, wheels wear out. And what do they want you to do? They want you to buy a full control arm kit for like, you know, $600. The car's a $350 car. I wanna pound it against friggin' snow banks and stuff like that. I don't care. It's all wheel drive. That's, I mean, the, basically a Ford Mondeo of Europe, but with just like a, uh, <laughs> a Marshall's, Brooks Brothers shoe. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm going to show you how we're going to cure. Well, first thing we're going to do is going to cure the, the rear camber issues. And I'll show you gonna how I'm going to do that. And one thing I have to say is don't ever do this at home. It's really dangerous. Blah, blah. So let's get right over to it now. This is the X-Type rear suspension. You have a lower control arm and upper control arm. And you have a swing arm, basically. That's pretty much what it is. And you have another lower control arm down there, which would you have the spring perch right here. This, if you can see right over here, that is where you adjust your toe on this arm. So that goes in and out and this holds, and this, this arm right here stabilizes it. So it brings the toe in and out. This keeps the camber steady. So what we're going to do is uh, have this, I'm gonna make an adjustable camber mount for right here. The first thing we have to do is get this nut off and let me go get the grinder and we'll pop that off and we'll um, uh, build up the mount. Next thing we gotta do, we have to drill a hole here and transfer it over here, then the connect the two. That'll give us our adjustment. We can move the camber in and out. How we get, what are we going to use for an adjuster on this uh, junker? Well, I pulled out of the junk pile an Audi 5 cylinder camshaft. This is from a 4000 Quattro. The camshafts themselves, the reason why we replaced, I mean, nobody replaced it because they're so expensive, but 
they're not a very good camshaft. They they died out at like 5,500 RPM. There's really nothing there. They really weren't very good. They're good for a tractor. That's about it. So what I did was took a uh, took a cutoff wheel, cut it. It was actually pretty. It was a uh, tough to cut. And I gra I cut a lobe off, and I cut the lobe in half. And here's and here's the adjuster right here. Just a cam lobe. Now I slotted it out pretty far, so I could put the bolt in. I could adjust it. You know, if you can sit there and see this, I can adjust it to wherever I want. You know, let's say right there and to get or right there, whatever. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to bolt that in and have a place where it's going to go back and forth for the uh, uh, adjustment. So when I when I weld this to here, you turn it, it's just like a concentric key. But just something I'd line around. Figured I guess give it a shot, see what happens. Um, I did it my focus for the lower uh, control arm and it worked great. Yeah, figured to see how to do this. If it screws up, screws up. Doesn't, doesn't. So let me go weld this in and I'll show you. Uh, what I got. There's the adjuster. I got to hog out the hole on the inside, so I get so this hole right here, right there, that's the original hole. I want to go a little bit further right to right there and then uh, bring this down cut this bring this down and what I want to do is put the uh, adjuster side on this so you can go back and forth depending on which one have one here and have one here so let me just do that and it should be all done we now have the whole um, hogged out if you want to call it and what I have here is just some pieces of metal, which I'm going to put right here and weld it so I get positive, I got extra positive and extra negative camber that I can put here. And one's going to go right here. So we can move it in and out. So this should work, I think. <laughs> no, it should work. Now, okay, I want this to have full camber right there. So, I'm going to put this right here. So it goes in the slot, out the slot. Okay, good. That's what I'll do. Let's check it out. Boom. Boom. Well, let's uh, get this thing back together. Got our handy dandy lube here. There we go. Alrighty. All right. As you can see, the arm is right there. My snap on needs to go back to the. See? It's like out like that. See, we have an adjustment. Hallelujah. Hopefully this works. We're going down to the lineman shop and see what happens. Okay. On this small little thing that we just did, um, didn't cost anything. We didn't have to throw something away. You know, we used it. We made it usable. And now we can adjust the suspension. And the tires won't wear. And we saved another car from the boneyard. All right. So let's see if we can get the ship box to bounce off some snow uh, snow banks. At least nice. <laughs> we'll be talking to you later. Remember, just put your mind to it, you can do anything.